how to make a Minecraft server on your own, on your own PC. Let's get into it. Hello everybody and welcome to OMG Craft. I'm your host, OMG Chad. So many of you have been asking for an updated video on how to make a Minecraft server as the Minecraft website has changed and so things are a little bit different now. Well, I'll show you how to make it uh, with just about any version, if you hang around, to the end of the tutorial. So the first thing that you are going to want to do is go to minecraft.net slash en dash us slash download slash server that will be in the description so you don't have to type all that out and uh, this is what you're going to see uh this is some instructions and even a link to a helpful wiki page on how to start your own server but you're going to want to download this minecraft server dot one dot eleven dot two dot jar or whatever version of minecraft is running right now now this is a dot jar file which is an executable which can run on your computer so Whatever you're using is most likely going to tell you that this could harm your computer, uh, but uh, you should understand that that is a risk, and we hopefully trust Minecraft and Microsoft to not uh, do anything bad with that uh, jar. I already have it downloaded over here. What you're going to want to do is put this jar in its own folder, because when you double click it, it's going to create other files. And if you just say it had that in the downloads folder, it'll create all those other files in the downloads folder. And it's going to be hard to find that. So put it on its own folder. I put it on the desktop. So my computer desktop in this folder here, double click it. And what you're going to see is it creates all these other files, but you can't go any further without first opening up this eula.txt. This is the end user license agreement and the uh, mojang has put this in so that servers will have to basically agree to the eula and this is about making money on servers and that sort of thing so if you're just using this for your home you don't have to really worry about it it has you have to change false to true t-r-u-e and then save this and then close it once that has says true, you can double click the jar again. And it's as simple as that. You are now running Minecraft. You're running a Minecraft server. You'll see down here, go away, you stupid green thing, uh, that it is getting the spawn area ready. You can see the percentages. You can see this nice, cool little graph of memory usage. And you can type commands into here. And we can test this by opening up Minecraft. We have it right here. Uh, these are two, these, both of these worlds are to this uh, server. We're gonna hit refresh and you can see the servers are now online. This first one I've just typed into the server ad address localhost. That's one way to do it. Or in the other one, you can put in this IP address 127. Dot zero dot zero dot one, and that is also your local address. Now, getting this server available to reach a wider audience, you'll have to port forward if you want it to reach the internet. You'll have to do all sorts of stuff. Uh, so it's uh, it's actually kind of difficult. We may cover that in a different video. Right now, we're just showing how to run a server, uh, but that means that it's online. I can go ahead and join it. Here we go. We can see that I'm running around. And if we open up the chat and go back over, you can also see, here we go, I logged in, I've joined the game, and you can even do commands. So this that uh, command that I'll just quickly do is, is the say command, and we'll just say, hello world. And you can see that the command went through over here. I can also type back, hi, and over on the server, you can see that OMG Chad said hi. Uh, you can also see that once I joined, the memory usage kind of went up a bit. And if I was to run around and load chunks and uh, create more chunks, you would be able to see that the memory usage would spike a bit as Minecraft has to generate the world. Uh, now, back over here, eh. <laughs> I have a powerful computer. I guess this is not really uh, affecting it that much. To stop the server, you do stop. That's all you have to type. Uh, and this will, you could say something after it, and it'll still stop it. But all you have to do is hit stop. 
and the server has closed and that window has gone away. But what most people want to do is they want to run their server with a little bit more RAM than what is default. So we're going to have to create a file in order to do that. We're going to right click on Windows and click New and say text document. You can name this whatever you want, but it's smart to name it something that you're gonna remember what it is. So we're gonna say start server like that. And instead of a .txt at the end, we're gonna change that to a .bat. And it's gonna say, are you sure? Because that file extension means that it's executable. Are you sure you wanna change it? You're gonna say yes. And you'll see that it changes from a little text icon to this little gear icon next to the name. Right click that and hit edit and it'll open up a notepad. Now back on that web page where you downloaded this, it actually gives you a command to use in order to give yourself more RAM. And what this is saying is start Java with these parameters where your top amount of RAM and uh, less amount of RAM is uh, at 1024. So we're gonna just copy this, use this for our likings, and paste this into the command. Now we are gonna do one more thing, and that is this Minecraft dot underscore server uh, dot jar. Well, that actually needs to match whatever this says right here. So you could either manually type that in, or we can just grab the name. So we're gonna go copy. And over here, we'll select this and paste. And now it has the correct name and we're gonna save this and close this. Now, if we double click this, you will see that it opens up uh, this window. Now this is different than the other window we saw before. And there's a reason for that. At the end of this dot bat, if we hit edit, you'll see this no GUI, G-U-I. And uh, that will mean that it'll only open in a normal command line interface. So if we do stop, it will stop the server. And that'll do the, that command line interface is the exact same as the interface we saw before uh, with the chat. So you could do things like say commands or any command that you want. If we hit edit and get rid of this, this is just personal preference on your end. We can hit save, close it, run it, and then it will run this. And you can see that these two commands are actually the same. So if I say hello, you can see that the server says hello and these are just running the two things. So that's the only difference that no GUI does. Uh, one more thing is that if you want to change the world, a lot of people want to run a server so that they can do crazy stuff with the world. This world folder is your save folder. So it has the data and region stats and level dot dat stuff in it. So if you want to change this, all you have to do if like, let's say you wanted to make it the world that you normally play on, go to your Minecraft saves folder, take the folder that is your save, bring it in here, either rename it world or in the server dot properties, you can edit that uh, it, to say whatever the, this uh, folder is named and you can change it that way. Normally it's just easier to change the world. And finally, one last tip, let's head on back over to this browser. If you want to download an older version of Minecraft, so we're here running uh, currently as of recording this video, 1.11.2, but let's say you wanted an older version uh, or a snapshot or something like that. Well, the best resource to use is mcversions.net and they have all of these versions for you to download and use. Uh, you can see that the betas and the alphas only have the client because they weren't running servers yet. Um, and so that's uh, download there and you can see all these old ones, 1.5, 1.3 betas and stuff like that. So. Uh, some really, really nice stuff here. Oh, you know what? That's silly. No, there was there was servers in these betas. I guess you can only do the client uh, dot jar. Sorry, I'm misspeaking. But um, there you go. So that's how you get some snapshots and some older releases of Minecraft with M 
cversions.net. As you can see, it's pretty simple to get a server up and running on your computer. Now, the next step that people normally have problems with is getting other people to connect to your computer by uh, using the internet. And a simple and easy way to do that is to use something like uh, Langmian Hamachi or uTorrent to give an IP address. There's even uh, some gaming programs out there that will allow you to easily share your IP address uh, with another person. Uh, if you are an expert or you have a parent or you know how to do it yourself, you can also port forward the Minecraft port so that other people can join on your external IP address that's visible to the whole world. Uh, that is a little bit complicated and can have lots of issues if your computer has a firewall or if your router is set up weird. There's a whole bunch of issues that can happen with that so it's a little bit hard to cover in a video so you may have to do a little bit of research on your own but that is called port forwarding. If you google port forwarding for Minecraft you should find some good resources. Thanks so much for watching this video on OMG Craft. If you liked it make sure you give it a big old thumbs up. Please do that. It helps the channel a lot. Make sure you subscribe for future videos and I'll see you next time on OMG Craft. Bye!